Good morning, Ambassador. It's so nice to see you. Thank you so much for making time for our Daily Planet today so that we can have a special edition on World Ocean Day. Well, thank you very much. And uh, no, thank you for sparing time in your day to uh, get my views. So we'll um, go ahead and start just by asking you a little bit about yourself. I think our readers would be really fascinated to know your background. I come from Fiji. I'm a fifth generation Fijian. My uh, ancestor arrived there as a Captain, Master Mariner, they used to call them, of a sailing ship in those days. I've been connected with the ocean since the day I was born. My parents uh, lived on outer islands in Fiji. Uh, my father was in district administration. So from really the week that I was born, I was on small boats. And then I worked in government as well. Uh, for the, up until I was about 40, I was working for the Fiji government uh, and I had 10 years in rural development. The same thing, all my work was in small boats. So I've always felt very connected to the ocean. When I became the president of the General Assembly in 2017, I said that the jewel in the crown of my year as president would be the UN Ocean Conference. Why? Because, you know, from the Pacific Islands point of view, from any island point of view, climate change and ocean change are the two great challenges of our time. Ambassador, I wanted to ask about issues of equity and fundamental human rights, which are really coming to the public's attention in light of recent events. And one place where there are huge problems in ocean governance is human rights for fisheries workers on ships and on, on the high seas. We've known about these slavery issues for years, but what more will the UN do about these very heinous problems? Could the UN set a goal of ending slavery on fishing ships by 2030? There's no doubt that illegal activities at sea, blue crime, is linked to slavery and human rights issues. It's one that's getting a lot of attention. Look, what can the UN do about it? Well, FAO has the Port States Measures Agreement, which does give port states the right, you know, check on the status of all the crew and the, the, the as well as the catch. We've got the Cape Town Agreement, which is also looks at the welfare of the seamen. I think, you know, we do have to find out better ways of enforcing. And uh, I know that uh, UNODC, you know, the UN uh, Drugs and Crime Office, uh, they, they're they giving a lot of attention to this as well, uh, blue crime. Yes, thank you. I, I hope that it does get more and more attention. So turning to the next decade, we know that in 2021, the UN will begin a decade of ocean science and sustainable development. And specifically, the COP next year was supposed to have an ocean dialogue. And now that you've had so much success with your virtual ocean dialogue, Dialogues. Do you think they can go the next step? What, what would be the best thing to carry on the great work that you've started this way? Well, thanks very much for your comments about the last COP. I do think, you know, finally we got the ocean through the door. And it's always been a puzzle to me coming from the islands where you just, there's no way that you can separate climate and ocean. The ocean drives the climate, drives the weather, stabilizes the temperature. And, you know, we just, we, we struggle to see why <laughs> there should be uh, any attempt to keep us out of those climate talks. I would say that the main drive uh, that I get involved in is to uh, make sure that, that there's no separation, that nobody's working in silos. If you're from the biodiversity community, or if you're from the ocean community, or the climate community, you know, we're all in this together. We've got one central problem, which is anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions. And where we deal with those is primarily at the UNFCCC COPs. For the ocean community, if we can't get those anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions under control, the show is over. The rates of acidification, the rates of deoxygenation, the rates of ocean warming, death of coral, rising sea levels, all relate entirely or almost entirely to the levels, the escalating levels of those greenhouse gas emissions. And the same goes for biodiversity. You know, it, obviously there are other factors, but the prime one is that, you know, when you talk about planting at 10 trillion trees, talk about the mangroves, the fact that we are still decimating mangrove trees around the world, decimating them when they sequester four times as much carbon as a terrestrial tree does. Seagrass, meadows, mud flats at sea and so on, the amount of carbon they sequestered to get recognition for that so that these are valued as nature-based solutions. Ambassador, building off the point you just made, the CBD and many other nations have set an ambitious goal of protecting 30% of the planet and ocean 
included by 2030. We know that currently close to just 10% of the ocean is under some protection, but less than 2% is fully protected from exploitation. Are you optimistic that we can get to 30% by 2030? And how do you plan to get the 2% fully protected number higher? Look, I'm, I'm, I always say I'm neither an optimist nor a pessimist. I'm a hard-nosed pragmatist. I um, think that it's very achievable, the 30% figure. I've been amazed at how quickly the whole movement has snowballed, actually, in our major countries now, whereas we were just testing this idea this time last year. It's really snowballed. And you know, I was very proud of my own prime minister from Fiji and uh, Madrid in December, where he came out very strongly saying, you know, 30%. I see, you know, new countries every day coming in and joining us in Britain, Germany, others uh, all uh, signing up to this 30 by 30 movement. As far as um, this year is concerned, I mean, we've got 10 by 20 to think about, right? That's SDG 14.5. It matures in 2020. So we've got six months to get to that 10% of the ocean and marine protected areas by the end of this year. But I hope I live long enough to see 50% of the ocean by 2050 in marine protected areas. Wow, that would be great. You and me both. Do you think that um, fishing is really going to last much longer? I heard you say and make a comment about this the other day and thought it was really interesting. And is the UN ready to really push through the kinds of reforms we need to finally end IUU fishing, as well as the kind of labor infractions that happen on ship fishing ships. I uh, often put it on consumers to say, hey, don't think that this is just something that other people are gonna do. You know, you as consumers have to satisfy yourselves uh, that you are receiving fish, which has been not just sustainably caught, but legally caught. And, you know, that obviously goes to the fishmongers, it goes to the whole supply chain and supermarkets and all the rest. Nobody wants to be receivers of stolen goods, especially when it's being stolen from, you know, the biodiversity, which basically <laughs> our uh, survival system on this planet. So my comments about uh, alternates to fish, look, everybody likes fish and we're going to be eating fish till the last human being uh, passes away. But I do think there will be alternatives. You know, change is a constant. And I believe that the whole consciousness that, that is there now, that we, have, that we are damaging our life support systems on this planet, is going to make people start thinking a lot more about what they are putting into their stomachs. I mean, my wife and I, when we were living in New York, uh, we've been beef eaters all our lives, but one, the, the day came when we read that final beef report, which said what the beef industry was doing uh, to this planet. Then we looked at a photograph of our grandchildren and we said, you know, which do we love more? The answer's obvious. And we gave up eating beef from that time. The fact is, you know, I think people will change when they see what's at stake here. So when it comes to the, the, the ocean, things like tuna are magnificent animals like gazelles and giraffes on the Serengeti Plains. And I think our attitude is going to change about eating those beautiful animals. Wild fish are this only species that we go out there and hunt for major sustenance for humanity. We are going to be getting into things like cell-based fish. This is the same thing with meat. I'm not, not saying that, that, that chasing wild stock will end. Obviously, that will always be there, but to a lesser extent. But could you tell us why you think this could be the ocean century and how important is ocean exploration and mapping the system? sustainable use of all ocean resources? Look, I think that we will get from the ocean if we treat it right. We have to give it the respect that it deserves as the producer of every second breath that you take, you know, all those little plankton out there doing all that work for you every day. And what are you doing for them? You're just poisoning them with plastic and all the pollution we send out to them. Where's the reward for them? And so they're out there doing all that work for us. We have to respect that. If we do, and I believe we're turning the corner on that now in our thinking, I believe that the sustainable blue economy will be what looks after us into the future. We'll get our nourishment from the ocean and it won't just be finned fish, it'll be cell-based fish, it'll be non-fin animals like you know, shellfish and also seaweeds and algae and so on. That's where our nourishment will come from, all done in a sustainable way, no chemicals. And then there's medicine. You know, the, the antibiotic age is coming to 
an end. Where are we going to go? Uh, the great unexplored area is the ocean. You know, 70% of the living space of the planet. There are species there which we're only just starting to discover. You know, just estimates of millions of species undiscovered. I think that the medicines of the future will come from the deep sea and from the high seas. So we've got to protect them as well. And uh, apart from all that, you know, the ocean is our mother and you've got to respect your mother. Definitely have to respect your mother. Thank you so much. I just wanted to end with a question about the next UN Ocean Conference. We know that this was supposed to be the week when we would all be in Lisbon together. Do you think you'll have new dates to announce soon? And if there were a new U.S. administration, how important would it be to have the president or the vice president to participate in the next, in the UN Ocean Conference? either in person or virtually? Uh, look, firstly, as far as Lisbon is concerned, the Kenyan government and the uh, Portuguese government have made it very clear that they are ready to host a really vibrant conference. They're sending out very strong messages from the president of Kenya and the prime minister of Portugal downwards. Uh, Everybody is really geared up for this Lisbon conference. But as soon as they're ready and in, in, in consultation with the UN, because we've got to get our ducks in a row with all the other conferences, you know, I, my best guess it would be uh, sometime middle of next year. Uh, as to the American involvement in, you know, I've, I have never been down on the mouth about America. American involvement in ocean action. We get all our best science and philanthropy and so much enthusiasm from NGOs and great work by a scientific community. And I can't fault America when it comes to ocean action. As to a change in government, yeah, if there was a change in government, and even if it was the present government, that'd be most welcome in Lisbon at the UN Ocean Conference. I think it would be great to have uh, either a president or a vice president come over or Secretary of State, as used to be the case in John Kerry's days, who was very active in ocean. So America, most welcome always when it comes to ocean action. Great. Well, we really appreciate all your time today and thank you very much. We know how busy it is. Happy World Ocean Day. And I guess we'll see you in Lisbon. Yeah, definitely. Happy World Ocean Day. Thank you so much.